right for us to kind of lose our minds a little bit or be a little anxious mm. about day to day things. I'm grateful for that the Lord is providing, Amen. providing um, companionship, mm. even if it is through Zoom. You know, <laughs> You know, that we're coming to this in this time where we have some like scientific knowledge of mm. the bees and what they are, and mm. also that that reflects that we live in a knowable, reproducible to a large degree world, yeah. Yeah. and uh, you know, a created world with order, um, hmm. that renews. You know, like we have the seasons every year, we have the sun come up yeah. every morning, um, and uh. The world didn't have to be that way. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's sort of beautiful that it is. Um, I, uh, and it's, it's nice that we, you know, even as we're facing this time that shows us our vulnerability and our ignorance that, you know, at least like the virus is a dark, mysterious force, but it's not, but it's definable. Mm -hmm. now in a way that it wasn't wouldn't necessarily have been to our ancestors yeah 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 and thank god for that and even just god using um you know when it talks about loving god with all of your mind uh the ability to use the mind that god has given us to be able to um you know um, do investigation and and discover um uh, yeah. you know cure and and yeah thank you thank god for that that's <laughs> we take that for granted sometimes yeah. but yeah. thank god for that experiences in grad school were like reproducing in my own hands things that I'd like learned in like ninth grade science or whatever. <laughs> it's, very, very, it's very emotional to just see that this is real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, solid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God uh, mm -hmm. for that. Amen. Anybody else? Mm. And that my nieces are met. Mm. Um, I think one of the things that that goes on is is you know looking at the situation that's happening from other people's perspective and seeing their, um, you know, some of their needs are not being met. Yeah. It, it makes me, you know, just thankful and grateful to God that that He's providing for me, mm. um, and providing me with opportunity to be a blessing. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I just like to say I'm thankful because I went through everything. I went through the emotional crying and, and uh, yelling at people. <laughs> and telling people to get away from me. That they, that, don't you know what social justice means? <laughs> <laughs> then I went to Trader Joe's and uh, everybody would seem to be all on top of me and I would feel like I was smuggling and I was just like, oh, I can't wait to get back in my house. <laughs> Ecclesiastes that the Lord makes everything beautiful in its mm. time. He makes everything beautiful in its time. And, and uh, you know, in, in our great moments, we see that beauty uh, quite visibly. Um, but even in the difficult times, holding on to the hope and the promise that the Lord will make everything beautiful uh, in its time. Uh, for those who uh, uh, may have joined us uh, a little bit later, um, we're just um, briefly sharing uh, uh, something we're thankful for this morning. Um, 
um, before we uh, worship together in song. And so uh, if anyone else um, has anything to share this morning, uh, the floor is open and then uh, we'll worship together. Hi, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Um, I, I echo Taja. Mm. I'm grateful that um, I am the that God has provided. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes, he is. Mm. So, um, and again, providing enough that I can take care of others. Mm. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm grateful. And I'm grateful that I wake up every morning. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. I was looking and hearing some of the statistics um, uh, in terms of unemployment um, uh, for African Americans and Latinos. Um, uh, during this time, uh, the numbers are great. We, we see the disparate effect in terms of deaths and also in terms of unemployment. And so uh, we're thankful for, you know, uh, we have some people, you know, in our community that have been furloughed or laid off. Um, but we're also thankful for those who the uh, Lord has provided either through the uh, unemployment or um, through other means that the Lord has provided. And so in all those things, um, the Lord is, is a provider like he did for Elijah. Uh, when he was there in, in the brook and, and he allowed the ravens to come and feed him. Uh, whatever way the Lord uh, provides for us and we're thankful for that. So, amen, amen. Well, as we come together and give thanks, one of the ways that we give thanks and reflect back upon what the Lord has done for us is by um, joining together in song and in worship. And uh, even though we're on uh, Zoom, we can worship in, in singing today. And so uh, I'm going to invite you to join us uh, with Pastor Ophelia uh, as she sings. For those of you who are uh, on um, uh, uh, Zoom, uh, you'll see the um, uh, lyrics for today's song, which is One Thing uh, Remains, and uh, we'll join together in singing. Wonderful to hear um, just your your gratitude. I'm reminded of Sister Davida's uh, word that she, she shared with us last week, and just having this um, attitude of gratitude and this this jar of gratitude that helps us even when we're in times of high anxiety and stress to remember that God is present, that He is with us, um, and uh, and that we can trust in him. And so this song, it, we know it, but just the chorus was really um, in my spirit this morning that his love, it never fails. His love never gives up. It never runs out. And so I'm so grateful for that. And so let's join together in singing. Um, one thing remains, let's hope that, that uh, everything works. Thank you. 
Amen. His love never fails and never gives up. And so we're thankful uh, for the reminder of the love of God and all that he has done for us. Um, I want to also take time uh, this morning again um, to wish all of our mothers a happy Mother's Day. Um, and so uh, let me go ahead and um, invite our children here to come and they have a special presentation that they gave to their mother. Watch, watch the cord. Come, ar come around this way. No, come around this way. <laughs> All right. So the first artist <laughs> is Benjamin. And so for those of you who are there, uh, what is this picture of? Huh? Um. The family and, and mommy and, and what and mac and cheese. And mac and cheese. <laughs> oh, and what else? And a donut book. <laughs> a, do a donut book. Okay, all right. So happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Just a brief story. We had a family um, pictionary, and I think what was his um his word was orange. His no, word, his word was lemon. His word was lemon. He was supposed to draw a lemon. So he decided, I don't know how to draw it. So he just started, he drawed LP. <laughs> LR, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, Xavier, let's see your, your, so everybody. First thing I have, you guys. Aw, I see. Let's see. Oh, I see. 
And let's so you go see your artwork. Uh, no, you can just soak right here. Okay. There we go. Happy Mother's Day. We got another one. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mommy Day. Thank you, Nehemiah. Come on. Stop playing soccer. Um, and let's come on. <laughs> Say hello to everyone. Hello. Stop leaning on the table. Stand right here. <laughs> Say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. All right. And let's show the, your artwork and show it also to all the people on Facebook Live. Amen. All right. Okay. Thank you very much um, for our children. And um, we, are uh, again, want to thank all of our mothers on the line. I think um, uh, my Betty had a fire alarm at her apartment. Uh, I could hear going on, but uh, to my Betty, uh, Sister Kim, um, and Pastor Ophelia, uh, Sister Davida, all the all the mothers, both natural and spiritual, um, we are thankful for each and every one of you, and I want to pray for you guys um, today. And so, Father, thank you so much for um, our mothers, Lord. We thank you for um, the blessing that they are. Um, Lord, to us both spiritually and naturally. Lord, we thank you for the times where our mothers have um, uh, uh, stood in the gap for us, have prayed for us, have, um, Lord, um, done so much for us. We thank you um, for those who are both uh, mothers, both naturally and spiritually, uh, for godmothers, um, grandmothers, um, uh, God, uh, godmothers, um, all those who are, are motherly figures in our lives. And we pray that uh, as this year goes on, even though we're in a time where um, we can't celebrate them as fully as we want to, Lord, that they would recognize the love that you um, have for them and that we have for them as well. Lord, we pray a blessing upon each and every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I just want to also um, extend this prayer. Uh, Lord, we pray for those that um, this day is difficult for them. Uh, we pray for uh, those that um, have lost their moms and are acute, uh, feeling it acutely today, um, that you would provide comfort. Mm. Um, we pray for those that desire to be mothers and have um, not had that um, occur for them yet or at all. And we pray for your comfort and your your peace, God, to rest in their hearts and their minds, Lord, as we are community Lord, that we celebrate with each other, but we also lift each other when we are down. And so we pray, oh God, that you would provide um, places of joy and places of peace, God, in both the celebration and in the morning. And we give you um, just all the praise and honor that is due your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, for all of our mothers, um, if you'll check your email a little bit later this afternoon. Uh, there's a gift card from Amazon uh, in there for you. And so um, please uh, take a moment to splurge on something for yourself. Uh, don't do like my kids do and uh, let them uh, take your gift card and, and make you buy toys for them. Uh, but find something nice uh, that you will, you will enjoy and, um, and utilize it um, for yourself. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joe. Amen. 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 Um, at this time, as I mentioned, over the course of the um, uh, last couple of weeks, we've had the opportunity to hear from different members of the Mars Hill family um, to share a word of encouragement, a word of um, um, testimony, a word of hope. Um, and in each of these, we get an opportunity to uh, learn not only about um, uh, from the word of the Lord, but also about each of these individuals that are part of our community. I think it's important that especially in this time and season, um, we need to draw closer <laughs> rather than apart, amen? Um, and, and one of the ways that we do that is by sharing stories. And, and so uh, this morning, um, uh, Taj, Sister Taja, um, we want to um, hear from you this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to share. I'm not going to be... Um, sharing long, but I just wanted to, um, there's a couple of scriptures that have been kind of on my heart during this time, so I'll just 
read through them and then just share a little bit. Mm. Um, the first one is Psalms 143, 3 through 8. Um, and it just says, My enemy has chased me. He has knocked me down to the ground and mm. forces me to live in darkness like those in the grave. I'm losing all hope. I'm paralyzed with fear. I remember the days of old. I ponder all your great works and think about what you have done. I lift my hands to you in prayer. I thirst for you as parched land thirsts for rain. Mm. Come quickly, Lord, and answer me, for my depression deepens. Don't turn away from me, or I will die. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for mm. I give myself to you. Um, and the second one is uh, Philippians 4 and 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Um, and finally, Psalms 27 and 1, and this one is the NIV version that says, The Lord is my light and salvation. Mm. Whom shall I fear? Mm. The Lord is my strong is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And so during this time, I know it's been challenging. It's it's been difficult. I know that um, you know, we've we've all go, gone through things in life, um, and that's not always easy. But in my reflections, I'm finding that this this season um, has been particularly difficult for me. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of loss in my family, um, and it's been a little difficult to grieve in isolation. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we've talked about it before, the whole social distancing thing and how that can be difficult. But, um, you know, it's been especially challenging in this prolonged period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't help that the weather is getting, uh, I mean, it kind of helps, but the weather is getting better. Um, the days are getting longer. We have more sunlight, but it's hard because you still can't go, you know, hang out um, and be with people. So, um, you know, the isolation has been hard, but, um, you know, I'm extra grateful um, for the time that I've had for mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. um, and for the new ways that I've been able to connect with my friends and my family. Mm -hmm. Um and that has been mentioned already this morning and the, the ways that we're able to connect with each other. Um, you know, and, and prior to all of this happening, I I had all these plans and these wonderful goals that I wanted to reach. And, you know, 2020, I had this whole list. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's, it's May, um, and it's one short month away from the midpoint of the year, from yeah. the year halfway over. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, so... In this time, like, I felt like there's a lot of things that I should be doing and, mm. you know, oh, I should be doing that, I should be doing this. Um, and some things we're doing and some things, you know, I haven't been doing. Um, and I think part of that is fear, right? Mm. Um, and one of my favorite sayings is that, you know, we, we make plans and God laughs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, like, how I feel right now. Yeah. Um, and I know I'm not putting down, like, my hopes and my desires and my goals and mm. all of those things, but... Um, if I'm honest, sometimes it's hard to just sit and wait for God. Mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where being consistent in prayer and our yeah. connection to God comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's it, more so than, than, than I can think of a time, you know, recently. I think that in this moment, it's really important for us to stay connected to God. Mm -hmm. um, and one way we can do that is by maintaining our relationship with him in yeah. prayer. Yeah. Um, and I know that that's, that's a theme that has kind of come up over and over, but that's just something that I feel like, um, I've been holding on to. Mm. So, um, I really would encourage us to continue in the same way that we've been maintaining our relationships with our friends and family members by talking to them on the phone or video chat or whatever it is, um, that we would just, uh, continue to, to seek God in prayer. Yeah. Um, he hasn't forgotten about us. Mm. Um, and it's, it's hard in this moment because um, it's hard to consistently seek him in this moment mm. because, you know, our souls are tired. Mm. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening, right? Mm. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the world. Mm. Um, but if you let the enemy discourage you from talking to God, mm. it creates a distance between yeah. you and God. Yeah. Um, and that leaves just enough space for the enemy to get into your thoughts and mm. in your mind. Mm. Um, so I would encourage you to just um, hold on to the fact that even though we're struggling, um, God is with us. Yeah. He hears us. Yeah. Um, yeah. You shouldn't stress about um, what you should be doing at this time. Mm. Um, 
and you shouldn't be afraid to seek him for guidance for Mm -hmm. you know what to do next and I know it sounds simple but um, this is a reminder that I've needed daily and I hope that that it's helpful to you too Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Kaja. And, um, uh, you know, as many of you know, we've been praying for Sister Kaja and her family as um, they've lost a number of uh, uh, loved ones to um, COVID. Um, and um, uh, in, in these moments, um, we learn not only about um, ourselves, but we also learn about God's faithfulness um, through these moments. And um, what you're sharing is actually a, a great transition to one of the things that was on my heart um, uh, that we needed to take a few moments out to do um, during today's um, service. And um, for those of you who follow me on Twitter, I, I um, had a, a thread yesterday about the importance of preparing the church and the body of Christ for how to process pain, lament, grief, um, and, and lament is not something we often talk about um, in the church. Um, we don't often reflect upon lament as a spiritual practice, as a um, healthy practice, as something that is necessary. But um, there's a whole book, Lamentations. Um, that's not the only place of lament, um, but Lamentations is really a book of lament. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, oftentimes in the church, um, because we think about the triumphant church and because we think of the renewal of, of how God is renewing the earth and renewing uh, his works in this earth, um, sometimes we can overemphasize um, that aspect of it and neglect the aspect of lament. Lament actually is a, is a place of victory because lament is acknowledging that the world and its brokenness is not as how God designed it. It is seeing something that is broken and saying, God, this is not the way that you designed for it to be. Um, Many of you, if you've been following the news and and we shared about this on morning prayer this week, uh, we lamented over um, the killing of a uh, 25-year-old uh, African-American man who was jogging and gunned down by two people who were um, following after um, uh, him and and accosted him um, in in the midst of a morning run. And in the midst of that, um, there was a lament, um, and especially from um, African-American mothers who um, understood the pain of thinking about when my child goes out somewhere, Mm -hmm. will this be the last time that they go Mm -hmm. out? And Mm -hmm. the realities of that, that um, we lament the fact that this is a different standard um, if you are brown or black than um, uh, being a child of another color. And it's a lament. It, it, it's a place where we need to lament. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to sit in the pain for a moment. And I think sometimes in the moment um, we, we want to gloss over the pain or we want to quickly get past the pain. Um, and I think that that while healing is a good thing, um, sometimes we never go through the healing process. And um, I'm convinced that if we do not heal through trauma, um, we will carry that trauma um, with us um, until it affects us both physically, spiritually, mentally, in every capacity. Um, So what do I mean by that? Um, One of the things is that Um, We are now in week uh, number eight um, of the quarantine and the lockdown. And, um, you know, I think it's important for us to collectively acknowledge, um, even as a church and a spiritual community, I think it's important for us to acknowledge. Some of us, um, some of us, um, you know, this has been a great season for us. Some of us, we've been productive. We've, um, you know, we've gotten so many things done. We've gotten opportunities to get everything done. Um, and for the 99% of us <laughs> who are the rest of us, <laughs> um, this has probably been a difficult season. Um, how many people here like baseball? Let me check here. Okay, we got a few people um, that like baseball. Um, you know, baseball for me is one of those things like the news. I can watch it on TV as background noise, um, but if it is like actually going to a game um, and I don't drink, so like, that takes out kind of half of the fun of the <laughs> baseball game. Um, you know, 
Base, I mean, I, baseball for me, it's it's challenging, um, and, um, and and probably it's because I prefer fast paced action. I, I I prefer you know things that are going quickly, and and I, I want to see the action. I want to see people stealing bases. I want to see all of that activity going on. But baseball kind of just takes life slow. Um, or in other words, uh, it's like they live down south. Um, you know, down south, if you, though any of you are from down south, I mean, life has a different pace. Um, it's a much slower pace. Um, I did some consulting down south, and, you know, it's just like I'm used to the northeast, kind of go get them, go get them, go get them. And, and I went down south, and they were just like, oh, okay, you want some tea? Um, yeah, let's, let's sit down for a little bit. Let's get some biscuits. And I was like, oh, I'll take some biscuits. I'm like, all right, let me let me make it right now. And I'm like, wait. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, we got time. You know, that 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 is that is the southern hospitality. It is, it is time extended. And you know what? I realize some people thrive in that slow pace. Some people thrive in the fast pace. And so it's okay to acknowledge in different seasons that we might have a difficulty in this season while others are thriving. Mm -hmm. And so thriving is not necessarily just the fact that we enjoy it or it fits our personality or fits what we like or enjoy, but thriving is learning how that no matter what is going on, we make the most of every opportunity. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to give a space um, in our service today um, to acknowledge and to recognize for those of us who are struggling in this moment that it is okay. God's grace is sufficient. Yes. Um, and his grace is sufficient when we can acknowledge where we're at. And so, you know, I think sometimes in, you know, if, if, if sometimes to over spiritualize, we try and make people feel like, okay, well, if I'm feeling this way, I'm, I'm not walking in faith or I'm not in a place of, of growth, but I want us to have a space where we can acknowledge and say, you know what, I'm, I, I'm, I, I, I'm blessed, but I'm struggling. I'm blessed, but this is difficult for me. Or, you know, and, and some of you, that might not be you. Some of you, you might be in this season like, God, if I didn't have to work, uh, you know, if I could work from home for the rest of my life, if I could, you know, just not do any of this, I mean, life would be good. Um, but for some of us, the, the, the change of pace has been difficult. And um, um, in that, we can acknowledge where we're at. We can acknowledge what we're feeling, and then once we have done so, we can bring those things and petitions unto the Lord. Um, Sister Taja shared uh, the scripture from Philippians where it says to be anxious for nothing. Um, and so we have to recognize that um, anxiety quickly can try and raise its head, but in the midst of everything, giving it over to God and acknowledging I'm here and it's a difficult place and but I'm trusting God to help me through it. Um, the Psalms I love because anytime you know you, when you when you hear Psalms and, and sometimes like even as Taj was reading it when you hear the beginning of Psalms you like ooh David <laughs> you really gonna say that like God you just forgot about me you forsake me like I mean David just lays it all out there he just says like God what's wrong with you you know like I thought you were God and everybody now is you know making me feel like I you know that you've forgotten about me but what I love about the Psalms is that David always comes around and um um, you know, when David goes through something, he comes around and he acknowledges, you know what, in the midst of all that, you, O oh Lord, yes. are my strength. Yes. You, O oh Lord, are my provider. You, yes. O oh Lord, are the one who heals me. And if you don't process the pain, you can never get yes. to the promise. Yes. Yes. If you don't process the pain that you're going through, you can never experience the comfort of the Lord. And so, we want to start learning how to process the pain in a healthy way. Um, so let me give a moment as we're processing the pain um, for us to communally process and give space for anyone who wants to um, maybe 
Maybe you need to talk through something. Now, we're not going to have a, 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 a counseling session, um, but if there's something that you want to lay off your chest this morning or, or release, um, I want to open the floor um, to briefly um, uh, give that opportunity to anyone. I want to raise this. I don't know if this is the right time or not. Mm. And this will sound a little strange. Mm. But my uh, my ex father in law mm. is, or my ex wife's father is, mm. is, is one of the greatest and most influential men I've ever met. Mm. I learned from him mm. about how to be a man, how mm. to be a father, than I learned from anybody, including mm. my own father. Mm. And uh, he has had tumor on his liver mm. for a long time mm. and it has just recently metastasized in his oh, lungs so and, and he's lived a full life yeah. it's a happy life yeah. um, he's, he's going straight to be with the Lord when he dies mm. you know, I don't have any concern about that mm. I guess my concern is if, if it's the Lord's will that he be healed that he be healed mm. but if it's not that he not be in chronic pain yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, all of us deal with the grief that we're going to experience when mm -hmm. he passes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that is that is a heavy burden. Um just you know like life and death. Um in as a pastor that is something that I have to come to grips with not just from a theological standpoint. You know it, it is it is one thing to understand um when Thessalonians tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And it's even, you know, even to know the theological aspect of the hope that people have in knowing that um, they have committed their lives to Christ and, and what that means. But um, Pastor Cooper, one of my, my mentors in ministry, uh, one of my first ministry assignments, <laughs> I just, I was newly ordained and he was like, Come with me. You're gonna preach this funeral, and I was like, "Wait, what? What? What are you talking about?" And I'm so glad he did that because that shaped um, my um, perspective towards ministry. Um, one thing is that, like, you know, when you're preaching, you can you can shout a crowd up, you can you know get people excited, but when people are in pain they need a real word <laughs> they and, and and you can't like fluff <laughs> doesn't help people in pain and so um you know we 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 lament with you brother david even as um you know the acknowledgement of the full life that he lived but also the sadness the deep profound sadness of knowing that um someone that you care about and and respect and and love um uh, will not be Earth with you in this physical earth at, at a time. Um, those of you who uh, know Ravi Zacharias, um, he's been an instrumental um, part of my um, spiritual upbringing. Um, he's a, uh, what's called an apologist, uh, meaning that um, he helps um, preach the gospel to um, secular um, in secular spaces and, and also in spiritual spaces. But um, a great thinker, um, great um, okay, worldview. <laughs> And um, uh, with that, um, Dr. Zacharias um, has had cancer, um, and uh, most recently the prognosis is that um, he, um, um, uh, uh, the doctors have said that there's no more um, medical treatments that are available um, for him. And so um, our prayers are with uh, him, his family, and um, all the loved ones. And um, he, to me, he's like a Billy Graham. Um, he has certainly helped um, so many people understand the faith and understand. He just he, he breaks it down in just a, in in such a great way. And so, um, would you continue to keep him in prayer? And um, uh, brother David, um, what's the name of your uh, uh, your father-in-law? His name is his name is Von Verba. Von, okay. Yeah. B-O-N Verba, and he lives in uh, uh, Granbury, Texas. Okay. Um, let's pray um, 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 for that. And so, Lord, um, 
we acknowledge the pain of um, end of life and, and what that means. And Lord, we're having to wrestle with that as it relates to COVID and many people who are succumbing um, to that. And some of us who have individuals who have succumbed already. And um, um, along with that is the natural um, brokenness of this world and cancer and, and tumors and, and all these diseases. Lord, first we acknowledge that you are uh, more than able to heal. Uh, mm -hmm. We we uh, we are uh, like the Hebrew boys who who acknowledge and say, the Lord our God is more than able. Um, we acknowledge, we affirm, we believe um, that you are more than able to bring healing to their physical bodies. But Lord, we also know that it's appointed for a man wants to be born and wants to die. And and we know that um, there is a time and a season for all of us that are here on this earth. And so, Lord, as, as we acknowledge um, our wrestle, even in this moment, um, our wrestle is that we want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our, our desire would be that, Lord, you would extend their life, give them long life, uh, extend their time on this earth. But Lord, if it be your will to, um, for them to transition um, to their eternal home, Lord, we pray that you would, um, would help us um, to be able to process through these uh, moments of transition to uh, not lose heart and not uh, grow weary. Um, but to be strong in the midst of it all. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, anyone else just briefly before uh, we transition to the word of the Lord? She was, uh, she was sick with the, with the COVID virus, and she was in the hospital for three months. So now... She is in search for someone to help her with a mattress. Mm, mm -hmm. She's still sleeping on the same mattress that she was sleeping on when she was sick. And, and when she came out of the hospital, she didn't have money to purchase one. So I would just like, you know, if you would keep that up in prayer, uh, somehow or some way, you know that God is God has, has a way to uh, make all this happen. So I would just ask that you would just keep it in prayer. Yeah, and um, uh, as mentioned, we'll, we'll uh, as a church, support um, her through that. And so um, I'll, I'll get back to you on that and, and okay. how, we can, how we can take care of that. And so, anyone else? All right. Well, uh, let's uh, transition to the word of the Lord. Uh, we're continuing in our study of first. Uh, Samuel, and uh, we've been going through and looking at the life of um, uh, um, uh, Samuel through the lens of Eli and um, uh, Samuel, and uh, we're going to share uh, in that message today. For those of you who are uh, joining us via Facebook today, if you go to the Barson Fellowship uh, uh, um, uh, page, uh, you'll be able to find the link for the Google Doc for today. Um, and you can be able to follow along with us. For those of you who are on our Zoom um, uh, session, you can uh, read, uh, you can follow along in the screen here. Um, Brother Ovi, would you be able to help us in reading uh, this morning? If you can read from verse... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh. Yes, if you can read First Samuel chapter number three, if we'll have you read one through uh, verse number fourteen, and then um, let's see, uh, Sister uh, Davida, um, if you can read verse number fifteen through chapter four and verse number one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, 
Here I am, he called me. But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak. For your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. Mm -hmm. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family, from beginning to end. So I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons made themselves contemptible, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning, and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord, let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. And he let none Sorry. of them fall to the ground. <laughs> it's okay. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word came to all Israel. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. 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 Um, <laughs> This is one, as I mentioned before last week, this is one of my favorite um, Bible stories. How many of you, maybe in, in children's church or in Sunday school, uh, remember <clears throat> learning uh, this story of Samuel? Um, you know, I, I remember, um, you know, learning this story, and so I used to be afraid that uh, when I would go to sleep, I would start hearing voices. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, in this um, we can see uh, the example of a young man, Samuel, who um, is, is learning how to hear the voice of the Lord. Um, you know, oftentimes when we read scripture and, and when we look at it, um, we look at it not just from a historical standpoint to know, okay, what happened with Samuel? How did he get uh, to the place of being Israel's judge and priest, uh, the last judge um, and, and, a pre and, and the priestly line? Um, so we, we see it from a historical perspective, meaning this is what happened that uh, got them to that point. But we also see it from a standpoint of understanding, um, from a spiritual standpoint of how do we apply what they learned in that season um, to what they're doing now, uh, to what how we're living now. So one of the things um, that you know a good preacher will do is not only take you through the historical text, but they'll they'll help give you application. Uh, application tells us how do we apply um, this this episode or this this story? How do we apply it in our lives um, in the season? And and this is um, uh, again um, the the scriptures tell us that all scripture um, uh, is is um, is God breathed and is useful for doctrine, correction, rebu rebuke, and instruction in righteousness. And so um, we see here that also that. There is an instruction in righteousness that we get out of this text. There is um, uh, uh, also a, a, a rebuke or a challenge that we get out of this text. There's a number of things 
that we receive out of this text. And our job is to try and glean um, from it the application of, okay, now that we know what happened, how do we also apply it in the midst of our circumstances? Um, the story uh, 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 here with uh, Samuel begins with um, this, uh, this three times the Lord calls. And so we realize, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the context of what was happening here. But again, remember these times, uh, Eli is in charge. He's the high priest. He's in charge of the temple. He's also the one who um, was supposed to be the most spiritually mature. Uh, the high priest should have been the one who, uh, in that day and age, um, Jesus had not come. So the high priest was the mediator between God and man. And so the thought was the high priest would be the most spiritual um, person because of the one closest to God. You remember the high priest, if they had sin and they walked into the in the temple um, and uh, there was sin in their life, it would they would be struck down. And so there there were there was this notion or responsibility that Eli should have been spiritually mature. And one of the things that we saw last week was that um, there was judgment that came upon um, uh, the temple of the Lord because. Eli allowed his sons um, um, to basically run Rashad uh, in the temple of the Lord. What do I mean by that? Um, uh, they, they, they had detestable practices. Um, they also took the sacrifices, the things that were meant for the Lord. Um, instead of giving the Lord his portion, they were supposed to be representatives who were protecting um, the Lord given his portion. And instead, what happened is that they corruptly took what belonged to the Lord and took it as their own. Um, in any functioning society, you need order and responsibility and those who are given privileges and responsibilities. So uh, when we think about a CEO of a company or when we think about a police officer or when we think about uh, a leader in a church, all of these different people have various responsibilities. And part of it is that we need to hold them accountable, excuse me, to the responsibilities that they have because there is a danger when with the additional responsibility, it is taken for granted. And instead of carrying out justice, they instead use it as a means for gain or a means to um, take advantage of others. And, and so we see here from a biblical example they had responsibility, but what they were doing was taking advantage of the people, utilizing their power in order to effect um, uh, unjust practices upon the people. And we as, um, we as a society should abhor that. When we see injustice, whether it is from um, our uh, uh, leaders in business, whether it's from our leaders in the church, whether it's from um, uh, politicians or, um, pol uh, or, or police or, or those in authority. Um, we want to see justice done. And, and in order for it to work, we have to be able to hold people to a standard of responsibility. Um, so with that, the Lord um, finally came and said, um, you know what, I, I, I've seen what has happened and it does not please me. Um, you know, one of the things that I think we forget is that just because the Lord doesn't speak on something doesn't mean that it, it, it is not unpleasing to him. I mean, that is not, uh, excuse me, let me not use a double negative. Just because the Lord doesn't speak about something doesn't mean that he's pleased with it. Um, and there will be a time where we will all have to give account for everything that has been done and everything that has taken place. And so don't get it twisted that the Bible says that the Lord sees what is done in the light and in the dark. And so just because something is done in the dark does not mean like, oh, well, I, it's done in the dark. You know, there's been no accountability that, you know, okay, Lord doesn't care or the Lord doesn't mind that. God hates injustice. God hates injustice. And so those things go against his character and his nature. And so even though every time God doesn't um, uh, punish it or, or, or correct it, he does care about it. And so we, we, we call to that same God um, to see that in the midst of it, Eli had a time of reckoning where the Lord said, look, 
Um, you've allowed injustice to take place. And not only is it societal injustice, which God hates, but it was injustice in the house of God. I mean, it, it, God hates injustice, but he really abhors that in the house of God, injustice takes place. And so we recognize that God said, look, my, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, the church uh, and that being the New Testament house of God, that it, it, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And so there are some wheats and tares growing together, even in the church. Um, listen, the church is like any secular institution. There are great aspects of it. And as I use it in my Detroit uh, 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 terminology, there are janky parts of, uh, of the church. And, and, and you know, I, I, I've, I've worked in the church. I've worked in churches large. I've worked in mega churches. I've worked in small churches. I've worked in medium-sized churches. And, and, and one thing that I said is that if you're not spiritually mature, don't go work in a church. And, and, and I'm, I'm not like, I'm not like being mean. I'm just saying that, it, you know, sometimes it, it's hard because especially something that you hold in high esteem Sometimes when you see the sausage making, you don't always like, you know, what you see there. And, 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 and what am I saying that the church is God's blessed institution. You will never hear me say, forget about the church, because to do that would say, forget about what God designed. What I am acknowledging is that the church, even in all of its, its beauty, has its challenges and struggles, just like every other institution. And we are constantly working so that institution can be redeemed for the glory of God. Now, here's one thing I do say is that people who are invested can critique. Those who have no investment in the church, you can keep your mouth quiet. So those who don't want anything to do with the church and who have got a whole lot to say about the church, you can keep your mouth quiet. But those who are invested in the church have a right to be able to say, you know what, let's do better. Let's be better. Let's, um, let's be um, the body of Christ that God has called us to be. Amen? Amen. So three times the Lord calls. Um, tradition states that Samuel was about 12 years old at this time. And uh, one of the things is that Samuel had grown up in the presence of the Lord, meaning that he was serving in the temple. Um, but one of the things yet was that we see here, um, verse number seven, it says, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Now, that's an English translation. Um, but basically what, is, what that is saying is that he had not yet had a personal experience with the Lord. So meaning that there was religious practice that he did, but yet he had not had the fullness of God directly revealing himself to, uh, uh, to him. Now, we're blessed as New Testament believers um, to have the Holy Spirit um, who was with us. And, and those believers that were uh, there in the time of Jesus were blessed because Jesus was there in bodily form um, with them. But um, for Old Testament believers, um, it was not the norm where every day, um, you know, they had a word from the Lord or a personal experience from the Lord. You can remember where the Lord would just appear in a whirlwind or or um, the Lord would uh, appear through the, the an angel or, or, you know, and so this knowledge of, of personal experience, um, it's interesting because Samuel had, I mean, conceivably had been there 12 years serving God, but yet he had not had the fullness of an experience. Now, um, what is interesting here is that one night as he's sleeping, he hears a voice calling him, Samuel, Samuel. And um, as he hears that voice, he mistakes that voice to be that of Eli. Um, and so we see the relationship that he had with Eli. So um, probably it was conceivable uh, that Eli was like uh, every African parent who, um, you know, uh, 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 um, those of you, um, you know, my parents from Ghana and, um, you know, they had this notion that children were, they, they had children in order to help them get stuff and do things. And so, um, you know, back in the day growing up, you know, I'd be sitting on the, you know, I'd be upstairs in my room and they'd be sitting on the couch and the remote would be on the other side of the couch, literally two steps or just lean over and reach over to get the remote. And instead of actually leaning over to get the remote, they'd call out, Joe, 
Joel, come down here. And, and I'm like, oh, yes, Dad. Yes, Dad. And, and <laughs> they go and say, bring me the remote. You know, I'm like, you know, like as a child, you're thinking in your mind, is the remote right there you can't step over two steps and get the remote but as a obedient child you'd say yes dad here it is here's the remote <laughs> and, and and kindly give it um to him and so probably eli he was used to eli calling him to do things for him and and um as he hears samuel samuel his first response first, or first instinct is, here I am, you called me. Um, so it is an acknowledgement and a place of respect to say, okay, someone calls you, then I will come. I mean, I'm still dealing with my children um, because when I call them, see, I, I grew up in a household where when you got called, you don't say what, or you don't wait till they call you a third time. When you are called, you immediately get up, come and say, what would you like? Yes, dad. Yes, mom. What would you like? Uh, my children, um, I call them and they're still playing on their video games and, or they'll have the audacity to be like, what? And I'm like, huh? What? You said what? And, and you know, I, every once in a while, the spirit of my parents just rises up within me and I'm like, if I did that as a child, do you know that I would not be here on this earth anymore? And, you know, you would not have a father. Um, but thanks be unto God for the grace that he gives to us. And y'all pray for me on, on, on this Mother's Day um, and uh, pray for our children. Amen. Um, so this, this, this situation happens. So the first time Samuel mistakes it for Eli and he says, here I am, you call me. The second time, he goes back again, and I know he's th probably thinking the second time, like, all right, Eli, stop playing games. Like, I know I heard Samuel, Samuel, and he goes back to Eli, and, 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 and Eli says, I didn't call you again, and go back, and he goes back to sleep again. And then the third time, he hears uh, 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 Samuel, Samuel, and goes um, to Eli, and what happens when he does that? Um, first of all, something happens from Eli's perspective, and then Samuel must respond. Eli realizes that it is the Lord who was calling the young Samuel. It's the Lord that was calling the young Samuel. Now, um, verse number one of chapter three already set the context. And the context was this that in those days, the word of the Lord was rare, meaning that God wasn't speaking. You know, I, I think sometimes, and, and maybe COVID has caused us to not take some things for granted. And what I mean by that is that some of us, just the ability to hang out with our friends, to be in the presence of others, we took for granted. We we're like, oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I don't have the energy. Oh, I don't, you know, we, we took those things for granted. And now in a moment where those things are difficult to do, I mean, how many of you maybe took for granted? I mean, we're, we're a church that loves to hug and, and I, I don't know where, you know, that started in our tradition, but like, that's part of, you know, it's often, often a tradition in African-American churches, but that, that embrace and, 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 and the, the physical touch. And, and some of us, you know, maybe we're not really touchy-feely people. And maybe sometimes when people hug us in church, we're kind of like, okay, stay in a distance. But I miss those hugs. I miss those handshakes. I miss dapping each other up. I miss, you know, being able to like see, physically see one another and I realize that some things, when it's always there, we take it for granted. And what we forget is that the Bible had, in between the uh, uh, Old Testament and New Testament, it's called what, uh, in theological terms, it's called intertestamental period. And it was typically a period of 400 years, 400 years that the Lord was silent. Oh, my God. Some of us, if the Lord don't speak to us in a week, 
We're like, God, would you, would you hurry up? I need to hear you. I need to hear your voice. But can you imagine 400 years where God was silent? My God. And here what we saw was that it was a day and age where the Lord was silent in speaking to Israel. Now, understand that the reason why the Lord was silent was because, uh, if I can put it in the, in the Pastor Joe message remix, is that Israel was trifling. Israel was trifling. They were not doing what the Lord called them to do. And so, Eli, one of the things that is interesting is that even though it was rare to hear from the Lord, Eli probably had heard from the Lord before. And I imagine there's kind of a shame to think, man, I was the one who the Lord was speaking to before, but now the Lord is speak, has to speak through a young boy because the glory of the Lord has left me. Wow. What, what, what a, what a challenging time. And, and so in this case, the Lord is using likely a 12 year old boy to be able to speak prophetically. Now, you know, again, this is Old Testament. This was not a common occurrence. God wasn't just speaking, you know, and just, you know, walking along and having conversations with people. And so here we see God choosing a young child to reveal the word of the Lord. Now, you know, throughout the scriptures, there are many times where God speaks unusually. Um, and in the Old Testament, especially, there are many examples. And so one example that we're probably all familiar with is in Numbers, where God speaks through uh, the donkey. And um, uh, Balaam was going against the word of the Lord, and he was trying to go and do something that the Lord said not to do. And, um, and Balaam kept on trying to go. And what does he happen? He, he uses his rod to strike the donkey. And, 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 but the donkey sees the angel that's there. And so finally, because Balaam is not getting it, the Lord opens the mouth of a donkey to be able to speak to Balaam. I mean, man, that, <laughs> you know, you look at that, you just got to be like, Lord, don't make me like that bad so that that they have to speak through a donkey in order for the Lord to get to me. And so um, um, what, what, what are other unusual examples of the Lord speaking that we know? The burning bush. The burning bush, yeah. And what happens there? When he speaks to Moses. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, I mean, nobody expects like a bush that burns but it's not consumed. And so um, that was like an amazing sight. So, you know, what else? Anybody else think of any examples? Come on, my Bible scholars. <laughs> well, well Pastor, Pastor Bill, I, I, didn't, I didn't think of another example, but, you know, I read this story about Eli and Samuel a mm. few times, but suddenly today I had a different interpretation mm. or I had an idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. This is what I suddenly thought. Yeah. I think God actually spoke in Eli's voice. Mm. And mm. here's the reason I think so, because the fact that, I mean, God's voice, God's voice is not going to sound like Eli. Mm, mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the fact that three times that Samuel could make that mistake, yeah, and yeah. and and declare it to Eli that, come on now, you did call me. <laughs> like, like it's a little obvious now yeah, that you called yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. It it shows how similar the voices were. Mm. So in my opinion, I suddenly thought this. It's just an opinion, but. I suddenly thought this morning that God spoke in Eli's mm, voice. Mm -hmm. And another reason I think so is because a few times that I know God has spoken to me in my dreams, mm. ironically, he's never appeared as Jesus or mm. as an angel. He's mm. only appeared as people I know. Mm, mm, That's the, mm. like in my personal experience, mm, mm, God has spoken mm -hmm. in my dreams through people I mm -hmm, knew mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. were Christians that I usually held in high esteem. Same, yeah, they, would yeah. Have, they would appear and they would give some advice. And I thought, mm. obviously that was God, but mm. it's funny that God appears as this like that my aunt who lives in Nigeria or this pastor that I mm. like. So I, I mean, 
well, since the ultimate dynamic is leaving the image of God, mm. it kind of makes sense that, well, I guess God did sound like Eli, and maybe this message is also speaking of that God speaks through the people we know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, for example, somebody might ask Pastor Joe for advice and think that, okay, Pastor Joe, you've given your opinion, but let me hear what God is saying. Mm-hmm. But meanwhile, God might be speaking through you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of God, that he uses human vessels um, to be able to speak. And um, I mean, and especially in this time, um, remember what Moses was to the people. Um, When Moses went up to the mountain, what happened? He came down, and when the people saw them, they were afraid. And they were afraid not because, I mean, Moses, I mean, Moses didn't go up and get a manicure, pedicure, and, you know, like, you know, got a haircut. I mean, Moses went, and he was in the glory of the Lord. But when he came back down... It says like his face shone and it was like um, it was when he spoke, it was like God speaking through him. And so we we see that God uses human vessels um, to be able to speak. And and especially in the area of prophetically, um, prophets speak as mouthpieces for the Lord. And and so uh, in that sense, prophets, part of the role of prophets is to speak what the Lord is saying. And so um, although it's a, a earthly you know, voice that you're hearing, it, it is the voice of the Lord who is speaking. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about how do you authenticate um, to make sure that um, a prophet is speaking what is from the Lord and not from, the se- uh, from themselves. Um, but we do see the example of um, uh, even where as God is speaking, he uses human vessels in order to bring that word. And so, yes, can God directly speak where in a sense that um, God, you know, you will hear a voice and it is God's voice and he's speaking directly to us. Absolutely. Uh, but can, can God also use human vessels too as well? Yes. And so uh, there's not one, uh, we see both examples throughout scripture, both in the Old Testament and New Testament uh, of those, um, of that. And so, yeah, good. Any, anybody else, any other unusual examples of the Lord speaking? Okay. Um, so, as I mentioned, there's an implied sadness that Eli, who should have been able to hear the word of the Lord, is unable to hear the word of the Lord because of sin. And, th- and that's the part that we need to know, is that sin affects our ability to hear God. Sin corrupts our ability to hear God. And, and you know... <laughs> I know that's not a popular message. I mean, you can't you you can't preach a church down, you know, by saying, and when you have sin, you can't hear from God. I mean, that's that's not, you know, people ain't gonna jump up and say, Hallelujah, you know. I mean, that's not like something you jump up and shout about, but it's something that we recognize that the reason why we don't walk in sin is because it clouds our ability to hear from God. And um, one of the things that we're seeing is that when you pay attention to the text. There are context clues about what was happening. When you see there in verse number three, look what it says. Eli's, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The the, the writer here was not just trying to be eloquent. The writer here was not just trying to be, oh, that's some good writing. I mean, how many of you guys like like good writing? I mean, I, I appreciate good writing and like look at the description as as he talked about but what the writer was trying to also convey was Eli's physical condition reflected his spiritual condition as well and my God let us not be in a place where our spiritual condition is that our eyes are becoming so weak that we could barely see He could barely see, he could barely hear, but God wanted to still use him for the glory of his name. So what is Samuel's response? His response was, speak for your servant is listening. Eli told him, next time that the Lord calls you, this is what you dare say, speak for your servant is listening. Um, When we break that down, the first thing that he says is speak, Lord, um, or speak. Um, and, And that's a posture of humility. You know, I, I found that in the day of social media and the day of um, platforms that many have, people want to speak their own truths. Um, one, one of the sessions that we do in, in premarital counsel is a session on listening. And, and the reason why is that in, in marriage, one of the things that is one of the most difficult things is that 
people listen to respond rather than listening to hear. And what I mean by that is that how many times has someone been speaking and the only thing that you're doing is listening so you can figure out how can I pick apart what they're saying and then res and respond um, to what they're saying or, or, or contradict or, or, or break down what they're saying. But what we realize is that um, true listening or, or the listening that as well is listening where we are listening to hear and then to process then to be able to respond from what we've heard. Um, I, I have, you know, I have helped people navigating through, um, you know, intense times of fellowship uh, in relationships. And oftentimes those intense times of fellowship come not about because people have listened to one another. It's because people have heard what they want to hear and they respond to what they want to hear rather than what was actually said. Um, and sometimes as a mediator, what I have to do is be able to say, that's not what actually was said. Let's listen to hear what was actually said. Then let's respond to what was actually said. And so the first thing that he says is speak, Lord. And so it's an acknowledgement of humility to say, Lord, you have something to say. And not only does the Lord have something to say, but I want to hear it. Our posture needs to be, not only does the Lord have something to say, because whether we acknowledge it or not, the Lord has something to say in every day, in every season, in every time. The Lord has something to say. The question is, do you want to hear what the Lord is saying? When we're in this moment, what prayer is saying is, I acknowledge the Lord has something to say, and I want to hear what the Lord is saying. Um, we have to be able to humble ourselves to say, Lord, I want to hear what you're saying. This is reflected also in this comment that he acknowledges himself as a servant. If we desire to be used by God, we must take the posture of a servant. Um, we're not hired mercenaries out to do our own bidding, but servants of the Most High. And finally, he says, speak for your servant is listening. And one of the things that I find is, is a difficulty that a lot of people have is that we like to hear something and then go run off and do it on our own. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, back to my children again, is that oftentimes when I'm trying to give them an instruction, as soon as they think they've heard what it is, it's kind of like family feud when they're guessing, you know, it's like I haven't even finished reading the clue and they're already guessing or, you know, what it is. But I have to pause them to say, listen to my instructions because that is going to help you to accomplish what I've called you to do. And, and so Samuel reflects this aspect of if we are going to be believers or followers of Christ, we cannot just listen once. We cannot just listen when it's convenient, but we have to have a posture of continually listening. Uh, when the New Testament tells us that men ought to pray without ceasing, um, translation or Pastor Joseph translation is we ought to be constantly listening to what the Lord is saying. Think about it. Abraham. Everybody every, every remember the story of Abraham and Isaac? Um, the Lord blesses Abraham and Sarai, um, uh, Sarah with, with a son. And, and with that, the Lord says, go sacrifice your son upon the altar. Now, imagine if Abraham took the posture of, oh, I heard the command, I'm going to do it, and I'm done listening. No. As he's doing it and going about the work, his son says, I see the fire, I see the wood, but where is the sacrifice? And daddy says, ah, joke's on you. Guess what? You're the sacrifice. Um, but as he's going to do that, the Bible says that he raises the knife. I mean, he gets the point. I mean, you talk about like cliffhanger, you talk about God, you talk about commercial break about to break in, like right at the moment of action. But I believe it was because Abraham was in a posture of continually listening to what the Lord was saying so that when he raised the knife to go and to sacrifice his own kid, he said, he saw as he raises up, he's listening and says, listen to the sound over there. And what's that sound over there I hear? It's a ram in the bush. It is the sacrifice I'm going to provide. And because he was listening, he was able to hear God and to be able to do the full will of God. 
Romans, Romans, in the book of Romans, it reminds us to do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Our mind is renewed as we hear the word of the Lord, we meditate on it, and we put it into practice. So let me pause for a second. Any thoughts on speak, Lord, for your servant is listening? Any thoughts about what the uh, what um, Samuel said back to the Lord? I think you said it, Pastor Joe, in the sense that we have to be ready to hear mm. from the Lord and um, not just even in our in our prayerful moments at home, you know, maybe when we do our word in the morning or when we're going to sleep at night, but without ceasing, which means throughout the day mm -hmm. as we're going about our work, as we're working with our families, as we're talking to friends, like God is always speaking, but it's on us to position ourselves to hear what he's saying, mm -hmm. to kind of mm -hmm. to tune out the noise that's around us. Um, and not in a posture where we're like kneeling in front of people and you know, <laughs> obviously, right? but yeah. in um, in our spirit, always listening for God to speak into a situation wherever we happen to be, whatever we happen to be doing, um, making ourselves available to hear the, what God might be saying in that moment. Amen. Amen. I mean, connected to what Brother Obi was saying is that when we are listening, we'll be able to hear God speaking through human vessels. And uh, sometimes, sometimes again, God will use human vessels to speak um, uh, directly. And that's where the Bible says, in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. And, and so um, being able to hear, okay, this is the Lord speaking. And being able to discern between, um, you know, um, um, between uh, what I call the, the, the bone, you know, eat the meat, spit out the bones. Um, being able to discern between those two, but being able to hear God speaking through this circumstance or this situation. And, and here's something that, you know, um, some people won't even know or understand is that, you know, sometimes God, we recognize God uses unusual vessels to speak. Um, sometimes he uses your enemies <laughs> to speak the word of the Lord um, to you. And sometimes he will even use unsaved enemies to remind you of what the Lord is saying. I mean, it, it's crazy how God does it, but he'll, he'll use circumstances and situations. And, and there have been plenty of circumstances where it, it, it was the Lord speaking and reminding me of his will, but he used unusual vessels. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So um, what happens when the Lord spoke? And so we see there in the second part, and, and, and just to bear with us just a little bit more as we finish this chapter, um, so the Lord uh, entrusted Samuel with knowledge of some great things that were going to happen. And he says, I'm about to do something, Israel, that make, will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. Now, most people will be like, ooh, you're going to let me on some juicy stuff. Like, yes, that's going to be great. But what he doesn't know is that um, the word that the Lord was entrusting to Samuel was a heavy word. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, I, I, I call it people have a lot of spiritual envy. And, and what I mean by that is that people see a lot of the, you know, the public display of those who have spiritual gifts, either prophetically or evangel evangelistically or, or prayer warriors, and they see the glory of it. But, you know, oftentimes they don't see the true weight that carries along with these spiritual responsibilities. And so, you know, even in pastoring, um, I love pastoring. I love sharing. But if you think pastoring is only about getting up on a Sunday morning, shouting down the house, preaching a good word, having everybody shout, play a little shout music, you know, dancing in church and, and then people raising uh, love offerings for you, you, you don't know the true responsibility that goes along with the calling. And so, Samuel's about to learn firsthand, like, okay, yes, the Lord is going to speak something that will make your ears tingle. Woo! Oh, man, this is good. And then the Lord says, he's going to announce that Eli's family is going to be removed from the priesthood. Uh, I mean, can you imagine that word? Like your mentor, your spiritual mentor, the one who the Lord had used to bless you. Uh, the word of the Lord is coming to you now. I'll be like, oh, it's time. I'm removing him. And not only that, it was, it was this sense that there was a time of judgment that was coming. Like, 
I think we throw around judgment of the Lord um, like too loosely. I mean, back in the Bible times, you know, you think about when they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant and because Uzziah touched um, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the Ark when he was not supposed to, God just struck him down dead right there in that very moment. We have not reached judgment. I mean, like <laughs> we've got some brokenness in this world, but I loathe the time when the judgment of the Lord is in full manifestation because guess what? God will be killing left and right. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I know like <laughs> I mess up, you know, and I'm like, thank God for his grace and his mercy. Um, and, and I mean, imagine carrying the heaviness of knowing judgment time is coming. Um, <laughs> you know, as I think about, you know, mothers and, and, and correction, you know, one of the joys of being the youngest of, you know, four siblings was those times when my brothers were getting in trouble. And I can remember when my brothers, you know, like they would have done stuff to me. And, you know, you always wanted revenge, but, you know, you, you were too young to be able to exact revenge. And so the best times for me, and, and, and y'all pray for me because I'm still probably still getting over this, but the best time was when I would go and tell my parents on my brothers and when they would say, tell your brother to come here. And I knew judgment time was coming. And and I mean, ooh, man, I was like, yeah, I could wait to go downstairs and tell them, I told on you. And guess what? Mommy wants to see you. And so, I mean, it's it's a heaviness, but I mean, I probably had a sick joy out of it. But <laughs> um, Samuel was carrying this heaviness of judgment time was coming, and he was pronouncing judgment time was there. And not only would that judgment be against Eli and his family, but judgment was coming, kind of, kind of, come upon Israel. Um, Israel, who was once God's chosen nation, God's chosen people, was now going to be put in a place of dishonor. Um, you know, I, you know, not to be politically, you know, um, uh, one side politically or another, but, you know, one of the challenges in this day and age is that, you know, I have many friends outside of America who look at America and say America, who was once the global leader in medicine and science and everything else, is the one who was most affected by this coronavirus crisis. And so this is the same judgment that was going to happen to Israel. The one who was once the leader and, and, and you know, the best at it all, God was going to allow the Philistines to come in and to rout all over Israel. And we could imagine, like, what it would be like if, you know, if in, in, in theoretical terms, America was put to ruin. And this was what was going to happen to Israel. And the reason why was because Israel did not honor God. Israel had their own way of doing things. And God says, I'm going to bring judgment upon them. Let us pray for the mercy of God. Because we don't, I mean, like, as much as we say, like, judgment is coming to the earth, we don't want, ju like, judgment is harsh. And, and we're all going to have to face judgment. But it's not something that we, you know, we, we don't pray, like, bring the judgment. Because, I mean, we pray, Lord, let us be transformed before the judgment has to come. Lord, let our hearts turn from stone to a heart of clay before the judgment has to come. Like, even on my enemies, I don't wish you know, the judgment of the Lord. I wish, Lord, soften their hearts. Now, why was there the harsh treatment of the Lord? Remember uh, of Eli, um, because Eli failed to correct his sons. Um, you know, the, script, the t scriptures don't say whether Eli participated in the egregious acts or not, but what was inferred to him was that he was accountable because he had a responsibility to do something and he didn't do it. We learn that as leaders, we have responsibility and when we don't do that, that is just as much as participating within it. So when we talk about injustice, we have a responsibility um, to fight against injustice. Um, and when we don't do that, it's almost as if participating in injustice ourselves. So the last part of this text, we see that the next day Samuel gets up. He's carrying a heavy burden. And for those of us with prophetic gifts, 
the example we see an example of how to depend on the word from the Lord. Now, as I mentioned before, I remember the first time the Lord spoke to me. I was so excited that the Lord spoke to me. I was like, oh, I got to go tell the person. And the Lord rebuked me strongly because he was like, I didn't go. I didn't tell you this to go tell the person. And so what we learn is that um, there are some times where the Lord will give us a message to deliver to others. But in doing so, God's timing is always key. Um, just because God speaks it to us doesn't mean that we uh, have to directly release it or directly reveal it. Sometimes that word has to marinate within us um, because there's stuff God wants to do. Maybe it's through prayer. Maybe it's through intercession. Maybe God um, says that the timing is not right for us to reveal it yet. Um, but the Lord gives a word um, to, um, to Samuel, um, and uh, Samuel is carrying a heavy burden. Um, you have to know if you are prophetically gifted, you will carry heavy burdens. And the reason why you'll carry a heavy burden is because you are carrying the word of the Lord. And oftentimes that word of the Lord is contrary to what is happening in the natural realm or the natural space. So Samuel is carrying a word which is contrary to what Eli and his sons were doing. And so he has to carry a word of correction and rebuke in a moment where the, the sons are just going about in their own will. Now, one of the things that we see here also is that Samuel carries a word, but he doesn't parade himself before uh, the people to say, oh, I got a word. Now, um, we will learn a different example, which is a worse example, is that David, when he gets a word from the Lord that he's going to be king, what does he do? He goes and tells his brother, like, I had a dream. You are all going to bow down to me. Now, again, we learn from this the example of um, pay attention, you know, like, as God shows you, show humility because just because he chooses to speak to you um, in the message remix, um, you're no better than a donkey. Um, you know, God can speak through a donkey. You just happen to be the vessel that he's speaking through in that moment, but don't get it twisted. You're just a vessel. And you want to be a vessel of glory and honor, but he can use any vessel that he chooses. And as a matter of fact, if you won't speak for him, he'll find the rocks to cry out and he will use that vessel. So don't get proud just because the Lord chooses to speak through you. Remain humble. That is why if you are also prophetically gifted, you have to be humble. And if you don't learn humility, God will humble you. So anyways, those of you who are prophetically gifted, your word of encouragement for the day. <laughs> be humble. Um, so Eli asked Samuel what the Lord said. Imagine Samuel's dilemma. Eli welcomed him in the temple of the Lord, prayed for his mother, but now he has to deliver the rebuke from the Lord to Eli. And um, uh, Samuel knew that he had to be true um, to the Lord in spite of his personal, uh, personal desires. This is his first test as a prophet. He's a child, 12 years old, but God expects him to be a prophet of the Lord. This is his first test foray into uh, into a prophetic realm and God was going to see is he going to pass the test now I imagine if I was a child like I don't know if I passed that test at 12 years old um I'm not going up to my mom or dad and be like you know what mom um the Lord said that uh he's uh going to exact his judgment upon you um and uh the time that you know you know all of that is going to come to pass and you and your family nobody is going to be uh uh, uh live to old age yeah um, that's the word of the Lord I mean, I, I couldn't do that. But Eli, I mean, Samuel knew this was his responsibility. Um, there's an interesting response um, 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 to uh, uh, the word from the Lord. This is what Eli says. He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. Um, this translates into what we see in the New Testament when Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done. Not my will, but let your will be done. Eli acknowledged his sin. He acknowledged his shortcomings. And he said, Lord, do what is right in your eyes. Um, lastly, um, as Samuel transitions into responsibility in the temple, verse number 19 tells us that the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. Um, one of the ways that the Lord was with Samuel was the Bible says that he did not let any of his words fall to the ground. That does not literally mean his words, you know, 
came out of his mouth and did, <laughs> and the spittle <laughs> went to the ground. But literally what that means, and it doesn't mean that everything that Samuel said, um, you know, was true. But he's talking about everything that the Lord gave Samuel to say and that Samuel prophesied, it came to pass. And so when he spoke, it came to pass. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier is how do you know how you can authenticate prophecy? The standard is set in Deuteronomy chapter number 18. It says, but you may wonder, how will you know whether or not a prophecy is from the Lord? If a prophet speaks in the Lord's name, but his prediction does not happen or come true, you will know that the Lord did not give that message. The prophet is spoken without my authority and need not be feared. In the New Testament, we see the scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19. It says, do not quench the spirit. And so that means that one of the operations of the spirit is to help us to receive prophetically. It says, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. So it acknowledges that prophetically, um, um, uh, hearing what the Lord is saying is important. Don't treat prophecies with contempt, um, but test everything. Hold on to that which is good. Now, there are some people who believe theologically that uh, the age of uh, the prophetic age has ended. Um, I don't believe that. I believe the gifts are in full operation, um, especially as the New Testament talks about in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. Your old men will have visions. What is that reminding us of? That the spirit in his operations is still speaking even in this day and age. And so God will use human vessels to be able to speak. Um, but in that, we are testing everything and holding fast to that, which is true. Just because someone has the title prophet in front of their name does not mean that they are anointed by God or sent by God. The same way that just because someone has doctor or PhD at the end of the name doesn't mean that they know what they're talking about. You examine what they're saying and you test and hold fast to what is true. Same applies with pastors. Just because you have pastor, reverend, doctor, bishop, overseer, whatever title that you have in front of your name, it does not make you a pastor. But you test and you hold fast to what is being said. And like they did in, um, in, uh, in um, uh, Acts, um, they, they heard what the Apostle Paul said, but they, they, they went to see if what he was saying was true. They went back to the Word of God and held it to a standard of accountability. There is no one who was anointed by God who is not accountable to God. And if they are that, then they are not anointed by God. So what do I mean by that? Someone who says they're prophetically gifted, but they're not a part of a church body, be weary of them. Because if you can't hold yourself accountable to be a part of the body of Christ, then you, you cannot operate in whatever gift you're talking about because you demonstrated that you yourself are out of order. If someone who, you know, so there, there are a lot of people who operate in different gifts, but they try to operate it outside of the will of God. And, and that actually disqualifies them from the gift being anointed by God. Any questions on that? Amen. As we close, the Lord appeared, uh, uh, continued to appear at Shiloh. And he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. Shiloh had regained its prestige because the Lord sent a vessel, Samuel, and he spoke through Samuel. People came from, the Bible tells us that they came from Dan to Beersheba to hear Samuel. And the reason why was because before the temple was in Shiloh, but there was no power there. Listen to this. The temple was physically there, but there was no power there. God restored it and used a vessel in Samuel. And because of that, people came to Shiloh now, not because the temple was physically there, but because God was working in their midst there in Shiloh. Even when corruption seeps in, and, and I thank God for grace reminding us, us of this uh, last week of institutions that are broken. And she reminded us last week that what kind of faith did it take for Hannah to surrender her son to an institution that was broken? I acknowledge that the church is broken. And for some of us, we've experienced church hurt. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about just 
you know, someone someone didn't let you sit where you wanted to sit, or you know, they didn't they didn't give your name on the on the placard, uh, you know, to honor you. But I'm talking about you know where spiritual abuse may have happened, or where, uh, and I'm not talking about you know physical abuse, but I'm talking about where spiritually we had unhealthy leaders who used it as a, a platform for um, uh, um, um, exacting um, people to uh, dictatorship rather than servanthood, servant leadership. Um, I'm talking about people who, um, because of gossip or other things, were negatively affected by the church. And, and I acknowledge that brokenness exists in the church. But with that broken institution, I still absolutely believe in the beauty of God's church, mm -hmm. the beauty of God's church universal. We, we, we might have problems, we might have challenges, and some of you may have directly been impacted by those, but don't give up on God's church. Yeah, don't yeah, give up yeah. on God's body. Yeah. And, and, and the reminder that we mm -hmm. see here was that even in the midst of everything that was happening and taking place, uh, there was corruption. The, the people, the priests of the Lord had taken God's portion, had taken what belonged to God. But God said, I'm still going to restore my glory in the house of the Lord. I'm coming here to remind you that even in the midst of all of the failings of the church and the failings of humankind, God is still revealing his glory in the church and his power is going to be demonstrated greatly and mightily because if God is in it, he's going to be able to deliver and to set free. He makes everything beautiful in its time. And if we don't give up hope, if we don't lose heart, we'll see the fullness of all that God has done. Yes. Don't lose hearts. Yes. God's not through working in you, in me, and in his body. To God be the glory. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, as we close up for today, um, lots to unpack. Again, I said it's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. I love it. Um, it was also a reminder to me because there were times where I didn't know the Lord was calling me. <laughs> and uh, I just thought, you know, like, okay, this is something I enjoy doing. And the honest truth was when I was doing children's church, um, I really didn't, um, I, I really didn't, I mean, it was just something to do. Like, I, you know, it wasn't something that, like, I really thought, like, this was a calling for me. I was just like, oh, they need a piano player? I'll play piano. Oh, they want me to teach a lesson? Oh, I'll teach a lesson. You know, like, it was just, it was something to do. But not knowing, like Samuel, it was the Lord calling me. And so I learned to say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And now, some 30-something years later, here I am doing what God has called me to do, and I'm, I'm thankful for it. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, we'll just share a, a thought or a nugget that is, uh, uh, we've gotten from today's message, and uh, uh, we'll go around. Anyone care to, um, Brother David, care to uh, start? Yeah, I'm struck again by God's timing. Mm. If, uh, if tradition is correct, and Samuel mm. was around 12, mm. and that means he's about to be bar mitzvah, he's about mm. to become a... Mm. And it's as if God is saying, Okay, I'm cleaning this place out. You're mm. not going to corrupt mm. my chosen vessel. Mm. Mm. And I, I'm removing you mm. from any influence over mm. him. Yes. And, and it would be natural for, for the for the the sons of, of Eli and Eli to have influence over him. Yes. Over saying, had they remained. Yeah. And it reminds me of, of what the Lord said. Uh, you know, if anyone causes one of these little ones to stumble, yeah. it's better a millstone hang around his neck and drown in the sea. And it just goes to show that God will protect his vessels mm. however he chooses to do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What a, what an awesome reminder of that and and uh, God's faithfulness. And it, it gives you like a 50,000 foot view to like, when we're in the midst of it, it seems like chaos. But when you look from God's perspective, you're like, oh, I'm working it out. And so a great reminder this morning. Amen. It was actually this story that gave me encouragement as a child because that's when I started to experience um, just my very, like, um, just my beginnings um, in a sort of prophetic giftings mm. um, because at the time, of course, Samuel was 12 and I was around, like, 11, 12 or so. Mm. Um, and God had, you know, I guess used this story for me as a child in children's ministry. Mm. Um, that and also another verse comes to mind as well, um, fathers do not exasperate your children, but teach them in the ways of the Lord in Ephesians. 
Um, and as a child, that had encouraged me that, you know, God can select mm. anyone, mm. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. regardless of age, mm. um, for ministry, for um, being as vessels. You don't, it's not that you all of a sudden hit 16, 17, 18, <laughs> and all of a sudden now your word mm. um, is valid. God can, God can use, you know, children, and it's, it's always baffling to me that, you know, from the mouths of babes, you may hear some of those profound things. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Even if it's, you know, even if it's your own kid and you're like, I wasn't expecting that all of a sudden. Yeah. Just one day something pops out of their mouth and it's, you know, it's, it's I don't know. I think God can definitely use children in some pretty oh, profound ways. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to have, you know, natural children of your own. Just be around children and. And it's amazing how, you know, God speaks through them in, in different ways. And uh, there's a, a, a child author that um, has a, a, a Zoom on every Friday. And um, he does an activity where there's like two different uh, items and you have to like figure out how to make something out of those two different items. And just to hear, like as an adult, you you know, you're practically thinking like, oh, that won't work. You, let you, you know, like, but they're, you know, kids are just like, their imagination is so vivid and, and, and they come up with these amazing ideas. You're like, wow, I never would have thought of that. And so it's amazing how God uh, even uses children to be able to speak to yes. us. And um, yes. Uh, yes. certainly the Lord has spoken you know, to me even through uh, my children. And you know, sometimes it's just even little questions that they ask that the Lord speaks to me um, through them. So yes. amen. Can you hear me, Pastor Joe? Yeah, we can hear you clearly. Okay. Uh, when he was, when he was talking, you, well, you answered one of my questions because I was wondering how old was Samuel mm. when he was called because I, I was reading the introduction and I didn't see the age so you mm. just came I didn't answer that before <laughs> I even asked about it Amen. and it, it was so amazing how God is just so amazing how he worked and he can work in the mouth of babes and then he can work in adults and, and, and I was just so amazed how you explained that uh, and how uh, uh, the child at, the, at that age uh, uh, heard the voice of God calling mm. And then how Hannah uh, gave that child, after, I think after she weaned him or something mm, like yeah, that, she yeah. gave him to the Lord. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So I don't know, after I finished, could you tell me how old he was when she first gave him to the Lord? Likely. And again, I want to say that mm -hmm. uh, when, when um, I was an adult, when mm -hmm. God called me, and um, uh, I, I was asked, I was, God had also put me in a place where I was listening, but I really didn't understand what I was listening to, mm. because I thought it was like, you making all this stuff up. <laughs> but anyway, um, I could, I could, I could, I could, I could feel the tugging of God in my heart, mm. and uh, I phoned one day, and I called someone, and I told them what was happening, and they, and it was a pastor, and he's, he's, he's no longer here, and he mm. knows the Lord. So he just told me, he said, young lady, he said, uh, um, God's calling is on mm. your life. Mm. So I didn't know, but God put somebody there to let me know what was mm. happening mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I bless God today, and um, I thank God. I was, I think I was probably in my 30s or something like that, mm. something like that. But I thank God today that he's still God, and he's mm. still, uh, he's still moving. And I, I believe sometimes when God speaks prophetically in our lives, we are actually uh, uh, just afraid to go forth, mm -hmm. and we, because so many people, we are, we are not really uh, active in certain places, mm -hmm. where we, you know, in our churches where we go, like speaking prophetically, so we don't know if this is God speaking, mm -hmm. uh, we don't know, and uh, it, it's just like, you know, we're afraid, and sometimes I think we're afraid of what people are going to say to us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, that don't sound right, you know, but God doesn't always make sense when he speaks to us prophetically mm. like that, because mm. I know he speaks to me, and it don't really make sense, mm. but I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to think on this, you know, but I'm not going to say nothing to anyone, I'm just going to think and see, mm. I'm just going to keep this in to myself, because mm -hmm. I keep to myself a lot when God speaks, but I just, I, I thank the Lord today for knowing that God still speaks to his people. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing of it is, like that little child that was 12 years old, are we are we as adults, as we are we listening to God? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. God might not be speaking out loud, but he's speaking through his word mm -hmm. to all of us. Amen. Amen. 
So mm -hmm. I thank you, Pastor Joe, how God greatly used you today. Mm -hmm. And I just looked through so much today trying to get on the line. <laughs> hey, Mama, went off me three times. Oh, and man. Yes, it did two, but two times. So I thank God that God, through this phone, that God has made a way mm -hmm. in this time, through the TV, through the radio, and through the phone that people always stay on, God has made a way that his word will mm -hmm. go through. So yes, God has yes. So God bless you all, and I'm so glad to see each and every one of you. And my brother Obi, I'm so glad to see you. And I just want you all to know that uh, my very love each and every one of you with the love of Christ. Amen. So may you all be blessed on this day and know that God is with us, and He has not forsaken us, and He will not leave us. Mm -hmm. But He's uh, blessing us at this moment. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes we 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 take for granted, and even I know this is may, this is not yes. the best. You know, it, it would be a lot better if we were physically present. But thank God we have this opportunity. I mean, imagine if it was you know yes. fifteen years ago, and you know, internet was still you know we still on a ninety six k modem, you know, dialing up. And <laughs> um, um, but thank God we have a, a an ability. Um, who knows if this happens in another 30 years, we'll be telepresence and, um, you know, to one another. But, you know, thank God for right here, right now. We, we have a way to be able to, you know, stay in contact and, and be physically together. And so we're thankful for that. Um, uh, commentators believe that he was three when he was weaned off. And so three into 12 and, uh, would, be, would be the answer for that. Uh, others? You know, and, and one thing I, I do want to encourage us also as well is that, you know, uh, there was a season uh, of my life where um, I had time to pray literally 12 hours a day. And, and, and I'm not trying to be like, you know, super spiritual and, and say that, but like literally like a whole day um, I was praying. And I remember there was a season where I was really frustrated because, I, you know, I was newly married, you know, working at a law firm. And I was frustrated because I was just like, Oh, I don't love God as much because I don't have 12 hours a day to pray and to, you know, to just go before the Lord. And, you know, oftentimes what happens is that, you know, when we're fasting, um, oftentimes we're shutting down a lot of stuff. And it, it seems just like, you know, it feels almost as if God just like turns on a spigot and is like, speak, you know, like it's just like, God, you're just like speaking so clearly. And God is like, I've been speaking like this all the time. It's, you know, I'm not the problem. You know, it's just like you haven't necessarily been hearing um, me speak. But one of the things that I, I'm also reminded of is the fact that part of maturing in God is not only our ability to turn off everything and hear from God, but the ability to be able to do what God has called us to do and still hear from God. So you remember in the scriptures, it tells us that um, a, 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 a single person 
um, has one devotion, and that is devotion, devotion to the Lord, and, and their interests are divided. But then it says a married man or woman, um, their interests or a married woman, their, their interests are divided. And so they must, it talks about how they um, you know, have to worry about pleasing the Lord, but they also have to worry about pleasing their husband. Um, and, and, you know, what, what, what is exemplified there is this reality of um, part of maturing in Christ is learning how to manage our multiple responsibilities and still hear from the Lord. Um, the Lord did it by taking time every night to get away from the craziness of everything and the crowds and everything and, and spending time um, before his father. And so we have to learn our own rhythms of, yes, it's great that we can, when we're fasting, be able to hear from the Lord. But that can't be the only time you hear from the Lord. We got to learn how to cook, clean, you know, wash the dishes um, and still hear from the Lord. And so we've got to learn how to be able to multitask in those things. And that's the mark of maturity, being able to do those multiple things at once. Others. Sister Carla or Sister Kim, anything? Uh, Sister Kim, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. Day. Mother's Day to you. Oh, and I'm the mother. <laughs> God. That's all I have. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love, I love it. Just short, quick, boom, right to the point. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, anything, uh, Sister Carla or Sister Tasha or Grace? Any, no, no need to say anything if you don't have anything, but. I want to make sure the floor is open for you. I mean, I thought Obi raised a good point as we got into the sermon that um, Eli actually does get sort of involved in this story because mm. Samuel doesn't know what's going mm. on. Like, mm. he's not being spoken to directly. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, I, I was wondering, like, would, like, if, he, if Samuel hadn't gone to Eli first, would Eli have asked what the prophecy was at the end of the story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Probably yeah, not. that's interesting, yeah. I, and, and I mean, what, what that also kind of like thinks about is how God allows certain things to happen in order so that everything becomes like fulfilled. And, and oftentimes we think about things being fulfilled for us, but Eli also had to know, look, the time of the word of the Lord has now come because there was a prophet who had came to Eli and said, there will be a time and you will know that time. And, and this was what will happen. And now Samuel comes to say the time has come. And so that's actually a great point, Grace, that you, you raised up. So thank you, Obi, for bringing it up. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I'd like to add to that, Pastor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd like to add to that point what Obi, Obi brought out, too, because I was thinking myself um, when, 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 uh, when the Lord called Eli, when, when, when God had called Samuel, uh, how, how Samuel heard the boys, mm -hmm. and then Samuel went to his father, then he went to Eli, and then I was, I personally was wondering if that was, um, if that was God it, it, using, using, um, Eli, mm -hmm. I'm not, if that was, it was, that was God using Eli, but it was actually, it, it kind of, kind of got me a little bit confused, mm -hmm. because I said, I, I, I could read what he was saying, but then God was calling, but then was he going, but he ended up going back to Eli. Mm -hmm. to, 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 mm -hmm. So when Obi said that God uses the use the voice of, uh, of Eli, then I was sort of kind of was thinking maybe that's what God was doing too. But then Obi just kind of brought the point out because we know that God can use uh, anything and any, any people, place, or thing that he want to use. Mm -hmm. But it, it was just amazing that how the the boy heard it really clear mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that someone was was actually calling him. Yeah. And then at the last one, he said that uh, he told him that uh, the Lord had spoken. He told him to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's just it's just great the way God put things out there for us. And thank you, Pastor, for just explaining all of that to us. You know, thank you so much for letting God use you to be able to uh, explain things to us that we don't know we don't understand so it's, it's a it's a real it's a really big blessing for me to be under your um 
under your leadership today, and I pray start for that. So Amen. thank you. Amen. Thank you. So kindly. Yeah. Well, I never pray 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. I, I don't know if I could either now. <laughs> just being honest. Just being honest. Um, you know, we, you know. There's a lot of things when we when we study the Bible. There are things that we do know, and there are things that um, we don't know because the Bible doesn't tell us um, those things. What we can definitively glean from this text is that um, in our natural circumstances, God may be moving spiritually if we're paying attention to it. So whether it was Eli's voice or, or you know, another voice, naturally, Samuel was hearing something. He only responded to it naturally. But spiritually, God was trying to speak through that circumstance. And it was only when he was willing to say, God, what are you saying in the midst of this circumstance? that he heard the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. What do we learn from that here in 2020 mm -hmm. is that there are things that are happening naturally, but we always ought to be listening what God is speaking, just not yes. only naturally, but also spiritually through our circumstances. So, the, you know, like yeah. we, we, we can see what God is naturally doing through coronavirus and what's happening, but are we listening to mm -hmm. say, God, what are you spiritually doing in the midst of this? Because in, yes. in that, we can be like Samuel, just saying, like, I hear the natural things are going on. I'm responding to the natural things. But in the midst of it, God was whispering, their na whispering Samuel's name. And in the midst of these natural circumstances, God is speaking to us. And if we say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, we hear what God is saying. Yes. On that note, um, let's uh, close for today. Again, Blessings to each and every one of you. For those of you who, again, experience the pain of uh, Mother's Day as you think about loved ones that are lost, um, I want to send a virtual hug to you today and say that we love you. Uh, we're praying for you, and we're praying to strengthen the Lord. For all the mothers who get to celebrate today, uh, please enjoy the day. Enjoy. Um, the smell of barbecue from my house over to your house. <laughs> and uh, when, 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 we're, when we're together again, <laughs> we will share in that joy. But till then, I will eat for you and for me. Um, let's see. Um, oh, yes. Don't forget to give. You can give through Venmo or PayPal online. Um, and your resources go to help continue our ministry and to help support those in this season that are in need, support the Brookline Food Pantry and other needs that we're helping to support through this season. And so, um, Brother David, would you close us out in prayer today? Absolutely. Father God, thank you so much for this time that we can come together. Thank you for the technology that permits it. Thank you for the willingness and the hearts of the people that that are here, Father God. We, we love you so much. We just can't pass up an opportunity to be with you and to be with one another. And Father, please bless our time together. Please help us to take the things that we learned and apply them during the week. Father God, there's so much change going on right now. And, and one thing we know is that human beings don't like change. Mm. Father, we just ask that you shepherd us through all the many, many transitions that we're experiencing. And Father, especially please be with those who have, have, have lost their employment or not getting a steady paycheck. Mm -hmm. Father, please, uh, please provide for their needs and give them their daily bread. And Father, uh, please be with the sick, uh, uh, my, my, my father-in-law, mm -hmm. and, and everybody else, Father, that needs your help. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor, Pastor, Joe's, uh, Pastor Joe's friend, please be with everybody, Father God. Mm -hmm. Heal them if you will. People who are infected with COVID, okay. please be with the yeah. healthcare providers. Yes. Father God, please be with the pharmaceutical companies that are working yes. on yes. 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 steps, Father, and give them wisdom. Um, and please guide yes. the, uh, the approval process, Father God. Okay. Lord, we just we thank you. We acknowledge your greatness. We we want so much to be acceptable in your sight. We want so much to be like Jesus. Yes. Please just help us to become more like Him every day. Uh, this and everything I pray in the, in the precious name of, of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Can, I, can I just say for a moment, um, you know, oftentimes 
you know, I know we look and say that, um, you know, well, Pastor O and I have the, the, the responsibility as pastors and, and, you know, it's kind of like us pouring um, uh, into the congregation. But um, I really want you to know that I'm really blessed, um, one, by your presence um, here. Um, but I, I'm really blessed even as we engage during the time of, uh, you know, Bible study and, and sharing in the word of God. And even our prayers, um, you know, like I, 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 I want to share how much that blesses me. Um, and, and, and one of the things is um, I really I'm really focused on every part of the body doing its work. And so, you know, one of the things I really appreciate about Mars Hill is hearing different parts of the body. And I feel like we're so much more complete because we have the different parts of the body that speak and share and encourage. And so, um, Sister Taja, thank you for sharing your word of encouragement today because there was a part that the body needed that I couldn't say, but you could say and that you did say. And so I'm thankful for, you know, your sharing in that, you know. Uh, Brother Obi, thank you for the questions and 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 the and, and the comments yeah, that you yes. you bring in because it mm -hmm. brings an additional dimension to it. You know, my Betty, thank you for the stories mm -hmm. that you share along um, the way um, and and and, um, and and add um, into that. Um, all of you, um, Sister Anna, Sister Grace, Sister Davida, Sister Carla, Sister Kim, or Brother David. Like I I I mean I I really felt it even as you were praying, Brother David. Just you know, I was like, wow, thank you for praying that because that, that really touched my heart. And so I want to just encourage us. And for those of you who are on Facebook Live too, um, thank you for your, your comments on Facebook Live and, and, and others. And, and don't think that those things aren't important. Those really are making our experience all the much more richer and sweeter. And so I want to say yes. as your pastor, thank you um, because... Um, I walk away from these moments and, and, you know, I spend time preparing for the message each week and, and, you know, mm -hmm. I'll get something or, you know, I'll try and hear, Lord, what are you saying? But it's so, it, it adds depth when, um, as you guys share and, and the Lord speaks to you in different ways, um, as, as you share your perspectives of how the Lord is speaking, um, to you through the scriptures and, and, um, I, I, I'll be honest, part of the wrap-up is for me. <laughs> uh, I love to hear what people got from the message, but um, it's such an encouragement to me just to hear that. And so I just want to, I want to gush on you guys a little bit just to say I love you guys, I appreciate you guys, and um, um, be encouraged in the Lord. Um, we're going to get through this, and we're going we're gonna to thrive um, through it. And uh, let's encourage one another, let's bless one another, and be a blessing to one another. Amen. 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 God, Amen. All right. Love you too. Um, Sister Shireen, God bless you and uh, all those others who are watching too as well. Uh, we love you all. Have a great week. Uh, <laughs>